shale gas is being touted as a solution to peak oil and a major boost to competitiveness. But there are environmental concerns and there's an uneven playing field for many people who want to get into that game. But new research suggests that if the development of shale gas continues in today's vein, European industries could actually be at risk. Well, joining us now are the co-authors of that research, INSEAD Professor Carl Kuhl and Kentan Philippe, a consultant at Boston Consulting Group. Gentlemen, welcome to INSEAD Knowledge. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, why all of a sudden is there so much interest in shale gas? Are we just looking at trying to get beyond peak oil and kind of bridge the way until somebody invents sustainable energy from the sun, or why is there this interest? I can start with, with you, Carl. Sure, yes. Um, I think, of course, uh, energy and energy costs has always been an issue and has always been an issue in Europe. In the last five years, uh, what have we seen in the U.S.? Uh, we've seen the enormous plunge uh, in terms of energy costs. Um, and here we are. Uh, at once, we find ourselves in Europe with immensely high labor costs and on top of it, immensely high energy costs. What, what made the U.S. start with shale gas in 2008? Um, the U.S. started with shale gas quite early on, so they invested in uh, um, R&D and uh, demonstration projects as soon as the 70s. And so what we've seen today, the result today, is really the, um, the development of three decades of techn technological breakthroughs. So actually the impact that we see uh, on natural gas prices, it's only been effective in the second half of the last decade. So we've seen that prices have dropped from $12 per MBTU in 2008, April 2008, till I think in uh, April 2012 to less than $2 per MBTU. That's significant. That's a significant change. There are other factors involved with like in, in April 2000, uh, 2012, there was a very uh, mild winter, but really we've seen a dramatic drop in prices um, over the last uh, five, five to 10 years, yes. What has the impact of this, uh, of this price drop had on say the U.S. versus Europe at, at a time when recovery is pretty important. That's the only thing people are talking about. It's just really significant. I think we've seen in the last five years an enormous amount of job creation first in the U.S. Uh, Quentin was uh, citing numbers of uh, roughly 600,000 people. Um, it's significant. Um, I think the petrochemical industry was pretty much harvested, or at least many people are thinking about it in the U.S., it's going through a, it's born again with lots of new startups, uh, investment plans are coming back to the U.S. In Europe, on the other hand, um, I think nobody is talking about investments. Uh, it's, it's, it's just the opposite, and uh, the, the impact is, is just huge. Wait, you were worried about the petrochemical industry, and, and I mean specifically petrochemicals, of course, and chemicals in general. Uh, you need energy for two things: uh, first, to make the plastic, and second, it's an input cost to it. So it really is a double double impact. And uh, if nothing is done uh, regarding the input cost, there is no doubt that the petrochemical industry is going to go the same way as the car industry in Europe, where we see more and more closing down you know, uh, closing of capacity, and it's, it's just slowly moving to other places around the world. And it's not just petrochemicals and the big companies that we know, but all the derivative industries. So when we look around us, uh, almost everything that we have is pretty much made of derivatives from, from uh, oil and gas, and um, so there is a huge knockoff effect, or knock-on effect that, that we need to take into account too. So what should Europe be doing? I mean, can the government be doing something? Should uh, the industries be doing something? And it, the government has more control over, I mean, they have policy what, within, within, within Europe about what to explore. I think the governments can grant licenses in order to, uh, to explore the land, for instance. That's one thing they can do. Um, they can set the right regulatory frameworks in order to company to have the right incentives to, inv to invest in this kind of, uh, of ventures. Um, I think there are a lot of tools that the government can uh, can do about this. Yeah. So, um, and um, I think the U.S. is more favorable than the, than Europe at the moment. And um, it, 
we have other problems in terms of geology or this kind of, uh, of, of matters. And if on top of that we have policy issues, it's a huge constraint for, for, the, for, for the industry. Uh, to give you some uh, broad numbers, uh, a well in the US would cost between two and, and nine million dollars um, to drill, and uh, whereas in Europe it's between five and 20 millions. So you see the range is, um, is quite broad because we have, also, first of all, less knowledge, but also the, the cost is much higher. Well, for the time being, I, I understand the, the U.S. is just keeping whatever it's finding for itself. It's proprietary technology and nobody else can have any. Should that change? Wouldn't it be easier to buy the technology? Could I know there were some discussions in Congress about should they be at least exporting the gas, if not the technology. Would that be a help? Well, I think there's certainly a big discussion on that, and I don't think we have the answer yet. Of course, you can imagine that the local industry in the U.S. wants to keep this abundant supply uh, tied to the U.S. because that gives them an enormous advantage. Um, are we going to be able to have some some of the benefits of that in Europe? Um, I think it's uh, we don't know yet. Um, but I think there's another reason uh, why we need to start thinking about developing, not just thinking but really acting upon it. Um, we depend so much on external gas sources and just the fact of starting it would at least we know from just the economics would reduce the cost of energy already quite substantially. Uh, would not make us, you know, super competitive, but at least would take the edge off. But also give us more bargaining power vis-a-vis -vis the countries that are exporting gas. Now we're a sitting duck. Uh, we're a sitting duck. On the one hand, we have Russia, we have the Middle East, and now we have the U.S. And we're sitting. So how do we unsit here in Europe? What do we do? Well, to stand I up think, and do like uh, Quentin was saying. Um, it's not because of, an, of a lack of will of companies. I think there are two issues. Uh, first one is, um, in Europe, now of course many people are sensitive about shale gas and, and for many good reasons. Uh, but just imagine that uh, at once uh, we discover oil in France, uh, or we discover uranium in France, or we discover, we would have very much, of, many of the same issues, you know because it's, it's not in my backyard kind of uh, attitude. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, shale gas adds, adds to this. Uh, uh, and it means what? You need uh, not only corporate initiative, you need a political will. And, and I think this has been lacking quite substantially. Um, the US, um, one advantage is you have many individuals that own the land and they can sell access to the land. Um, Europe. Uh, we have one advantage, is that as an owner, you only own the surface. And so the government still has the rights to everything that is below the surface. In Europe, the government Europe, owns what's yes, under the ground absolutely. then. So in principle, and I think in fact, uh, you, the governments in Europe have a lot more power. Uh, we've seen this with the development of uh, nuclear energy, with the railroads, etc. Uh, so expropriation is possible in Europe. And so European governments could do a lot more than in fact the US. How much shale gas is, is out there in Europe? I mean, what, are the, what are the estimates? No, it's less than in the US for sure. Um, two countries uh, which have the biggest resources are France and, and Poland. Um, and um, Ukraine and Europe has also some resources. But Europe is lagging behind. Okay. But it's still substantial. Which brings up another issue, right? So well, I think uh, you have the Chinese powerhouse that is just um, really impressive. You put on top of that, you have lower labor costs, substantially lower. You have R&D capital. You have energy costs. And, and you don't have the environmental concerns, which brings up uh, and another they have issue. a lot more space than we do, uh, which makes it so much more easy. Of course, um, it's another reason, and the Middle East is building up also in that regard. So you cannot escape this. You know, it, it really is in the eye of the storm. We, we've been avoiding the, the elephant in the middle of the room in a way, and that's the environmental concerns about fracking. It's, is there clean fracking? Or is that an oxymoron or what? What happens is that you drill a hole and then you put a lot of water um, if you drill a well, you put a lot, of, a lot of water in order to put pressure in the well. It cracks the rock, and then um, in order to, to have the gas flow to the surface, you have to take the water out. Then you put it in pits, uh, in pits, water pits, uh, and you can treat it. Um, of course, you don't recuperate uh, the 100 percent of the water. It's but more you like can recycle it. But you can recycle it and reuse for other wells close by. 
So um, there are solutions, um, but of course, um, for the environment, it's always perfect not to do anything. But again, it's not uh, a world we want to live in. I think, uh, like we've been concerned with other industries, uh, we just need to have higher norms of um, of protection, you know, of the environment here, and um, and and let's do it. You know, but. But let's not just say it's, it's not going to be possible because of cost and because of uh, environmental concerns. Um, clearly, you know, if, if this needs to be developed in Europe, uh, we've got to have better protection. I think it is technologically, it is possible, um, but we cannot duck the issue. Let, let me end by asking you what the main takeaways are here. Two things. The first thing is that notwithstanding the policy response of the policymakers in Europe, um, Europe is still going to be more expensive uh, if it exports shale gas than the U.S. That's the first point. And the second point is it's not because it's more expensive than the U.S. that we should not use these resources because it's crucial for uh, Europe's competitiveness. So I think these are the two key elements to take away from this research. You yes. agree with that? Yes, I, I agree. And I would also add to this is that governments cannot duck the issue. Uh, we cannot simply say it's not as good um, regulatory-wise, as in the U.S., I think Europe, you know, has the means to really tackle this. They have the R&D capital to tackle it, and they have the legal means to tackle this. And I think our industries are also waiting uh, for that. And I think it's the responsibility of our governments to really tackle this issue, not just put it, put it off, and hope that it's going to go away. Okay. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen, for being with us on NCAD Knowledge. Thank you, Shelley. Thank you.